Hey guys, Dale the Options Guru here at Think Tank Trading. Thanks for joining my live watch list. Been a couple choppy weeks in the market, man. I won't lie to you guys. Uh, each dip last year, I was notorious for buying these dips with uh, longer calls, crushing on these things. It's been choppy even for me uh, because it hasn't necessarily been down uh, the way it's portrayed. The market isn't crashing right now, uh, but we are seeing very high highs and very low lows. It's been choppy. Uh, and it hasn't really been strong enough for longer term puts or calls. Uh, you know, both of them have been getting killed. Uh, the only way that you can really make money on these is, you know, intraday trading, uh, which we have been doing a lot more of thanks to Chaslin and Kindred. So thank you guys. Uh, but overall, we are in some pretty good positions. Uh, me and Emily opened up quite a few today. So we're going to go over a few here on the chart. I want you guys to see what I see. And then you know you can determine from there if it's something that you would want to invest in as well all right so looking at spy right now uh, if you really scale out on this thing and just look at the s p 500 as a whole it's not really th that far down you know people were talking great depression charts and everything last week i'm sorry guys i don't see it has there been a rotation from you know stocks that high growth potential in the future and to a transitional phase into value stocks to a sense uh small caps have sold off quite a bit but the overall markets in general aren't down that much i mean you look at the s p 500 it's not even down to its last couple dips that we had uh going into j just in early march right uh, and we've seen a little rebound today so i want to show you guys what i see on a shorter time frame uh right now Looking at this on the one hour, uh, you can see we're kind of in another downtrend. So you can see SPY is essentially getting rejected, you know, right at this range right here. And, and we're going up to retest this again. This is something that happened a few weeks ago that I showed you guys. Uh, and we actually ended up breaking out of it. So we'll see how this opens up tomorrow. But this is going to be a really important level for SPY to test. Maybe we can break out of this, use it as new support and then push higher from there, or we get rejected right here and it essentially uh, does what it has done in the past. So, you know, these are the two scenarios here, guys, and, and you have to watch what this does because essentially the entire market follows the S&P 500 index. So uh, this is what we're gonna be watching for tomorrow. But beyond that, uh, there has been some discounts today, all right? So I'm gonna show you what we're looking at and why. Uh, the first thing, we're going to jump over here and show you Joe Biden. Uh, he is going to be proposing a $3 trillion infrastructure plan. Uh, and it was kind of hinted at today during his first speech. Uh, but I want to highlight a couple really, really important things. So there's two major catalysts that I see coming up over the next month. Uh, this is going to be the first one, guys. Read this. $1 trillion spending on the construction of roads, bridges, rail lines, ports, electric vehicle charging stations and the improvements to the electric grid and other parts of the power sector all right so that is telling to me uh, in addition to that high growth industries of the future like 5g telecommunication all right so that is going to directly affect uh, a numerous stocks so we're going to jump over and show you the ones we're watching that we think have the highest risk reward ratio based upon its chart setup and its future potential. All right, so our top two that we're gonna be watching in regards to EV charging. Uh, this one, first one is from Emily. Uh, it's gonna be charge point holdings, all right? Uh, this was SBE ticker, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, this thing was trading close to $50 just recently, $49.55. Uh, it was in a nice wedge pattern and it did break to the downside essentially because they delayed uh, the merger and then you know all SPACs and growth stocks essentially over the last couple weeks got hit the hardest so this thing is coming to very very interesting levels you've seen this thing hit 1950 on that big sell-off couple weeks ago it bounced back hard rallied went all the way to uh, 3162 man so this is, you know, 80% gain on the first swing for this. Uh, and guess what we're doing right now, guys? We are extremely oversold on the RSI. 
we're bouncing right now you've seen this bounce look at this this thing bounced nine cents away uh, from its previous level that it bounced at and I'm gonna jump over to the website and show you this a lot of people think that they're just an EV charging and think that they're a brand new company but uh, the truth is this company has been around for for 10 years uh, and they got a lot of things going on for them and when this three billion dollar infrastructure bill goes through and this money starts going more heavily into these markets and uh, they get pushbacks for you know kickbacks for having these charging stations or using them the same as they did with the solar grid um, these companies are going to move quickly man and and these things are at support right now and and that has a ton of upside so just looking at a paragraph off of their website if you guys want to check it out uh, chargepoint.com uh, investors uh, is a market leader has helped pioneer networked fueling offering one of the industry's most comprehensive portfolios of hardware software and services for commercial fleet and residential customers and here's the key thing guys when we're looking at this all right i know this is future projections but a lot of people early on when you're thinking about future projections you just use your head right being dead serious just think about it you can see these things happening before they happen right when we we're transitioning even after the dot-com bubble popped right we knew that we were still going to transition into uh the internet of things right and it still did happen it's just that every company essentially wasn't a great buy at the time and a lot of good companies took hits off of it so i think this is a good company and i think it's underrated uh if you look at this infrastructure of the united states and europe expected to be 60 billion by 2030 and 192 billion by 2040 all right so you can take that for what it is uh, this company is one of the leaders in this regard uh, this is going to be one of the first ones we're buying at 1950 range we did get it into it today uh, and i like the chart setup i like the company in general and i do like the catalyst that's just around the corner all right so the second one uh, this one is from me you guys all know i like this company man uh, for many 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 reasons uh, this is SNPR. This is another SPAC. And again, guys, I know that SPACs are taking hits right now. But uh, this thing hit $10.02 today, and I was buying a boatload of this down here, right? This is near redemption price. It literally can barely get lower than this, okay? Yes, uh, can, you know, mergers not happen? And can other variables happen? Absolutely. Uh, but this thing has a ton of upside as well. This thing hit 1933 already. It's all the way back at $10. Uh, and I'm going to jump over the website and give you why I think that this one's going to have a lot of future potential growth. All right, so I'm on VoltaCharging.com. I know I brought this one up in the past, but I have to reiterate this, all right? You guys know that this plan is coming. You know the money's coming in for this. And you're seeing this thing sitting at $10. And not only can Volta Charging charge any type of vehicle, uh, they're also in the marketing field, all right? You're gonna be able to pay this company and you look how vibrant and beautiful their displays are. Marketing is absolutely huge in the United States. You look at YouTube with their monetization, you look at how much people pay for ads, you know, at the Super Bowl and things like that. You know, this company has uh, 2,000 different stations and contracts already and, and they're gonna have places near Times Square Houston Texas San Diego LA all over the place and they're not trying to have the most charging stations okay that's not what their niche is their niche is they're gonna be in the best areas all right and they're gonna have uh, a different type of people that go there uh, they, they look for richer areas around shopping malls and really nice areas and uh, people are gonna pay premium money to attract the, the personnel that is in an area like that as well. Marketing is no joke in this world. You can look at anything that uses straight marketing tools and, and these stocks are trading at $50, $60 a piece, right? So I love this thing at its current level based off of its chart. I love what the company could potentially be and this thing is really cheap. I think it has a lot of upside minimum PT for this is $15 for me, which is a 50% gain. Uh, Long-term price target for me on this is, is $20 plus, all right? 
Uh, I'm gonna hold this one long term. I'm not gonna worry about the volatility early on in this company. And I'm just gonna let this thing grow as I have with many other companies. So the second catalyst coming, and, and I know we're bringing a lot of SPACs at you guys today, but we, we can't emphasize it enough, uh, you know, what is to come. Within the, the next two weeks, potentially, ARC X Space ETF could potentially be open, all right? It's, the news is gonna drop on this, and I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, immediately as soon as that ETF comes out, you're going to see all of these space stocks, especially the popular ones, literally just go parabolic on the day. Now, you know, will they sustain those big pops like that? We'll see. Uh, but what I can tell you is this, a lot of these things also are at support because of the sell-off. You look at VACQ, this is Rocket Labs, which is a really, really good company in my eyes. Already hit 1680. Uh, we're sitting down here near support right now. Uh, this thing hit 1075 today. So you can see that these things are mostly trading within the same channel. Uh, they're bouncing off these lows. They're going up uh, near 13, 1350, coming back down. And they're just essentially trading like this, right? And this is very common for these companies. But I think that when that news drops, we can either catch this at the floor, swing it into 13 for an easy 30% gain, uh, but when that news drops and people really figure out what this company is doing, uh, I think that they can, this can break out of the channel. Uh, I think it can push towards those higher highs, all right, uh, near 1680 or potentially even higher than that. So I'm going to jump over really quick and show you what this company does as well. All right, so here's the website for it. Uh, this is Rocket Labs USA. Uh, this is the ticker for VACQ right now. This one has yet to be merged as well. Uh, they did just have news in regards to a milestone that they completed faster than SpaceX. And this is a company that is similar to SpaceX. So if they announce SpaceX was merging right now because of the popularity of Elon Musk, I mean, that thing, could you imagine what that stock price would be? And yet you have a sister company right here that, that is similar to it and people aren't paying it any attention. Uh, not yet, uh, but they will. So looking at this company, uh, this is their first one. This one is called the Electron, and I, I love the name of it. Uh, you guys all know that I have a electronic engineering background. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what an electron is, uh, you know it is what spins around uh, the nucleus of an atom, you know, essentially at the speed of light, and it is held together by an electromagnetic field uh, that is binding it uh, to the nucleus. Um, so, looking at the electron. Uh, this one has 19 launches to date, 104 satellites successfully deployed, only reusable small launch vehicle, all right? So it's pretty cool news for that. But what really makes it unique is the tailored orbits and the scheduled control and responsive launch, all right? So what they're essentially saying is when a lot of these companies have these launches, you know, they got to plan these things months out. And how many times have you guys seen in the last year even that they have a launch plan and then the weather's too bad and they gotta set it off for three months, right? Not with this company. Uh, they can launch essentially at any time because they have numerous, numerous places all over the world and um, you're not gonna have those delays and because of the size of this Electron uh, rocket, you know, it's not gonna have all the things that um, is gonna encounter problems as you do with those larger rockets. But if I were you guys, just look into this a little more. Come over to this website yourself as well. Uh, we're going to post more information on it. Look how many different launch sites they have. And just look at what they're doing, man. Uh, really great company. And in addition to all that, I, I just can't imagine that Kathy Wood is not going to be adding this company into her ETF. I just really can't imagine that she doesn't. So, you know, that's going to be some news on it as well. And while we're in the same field on this, guys, you guys all know that I love this stock as well. Uh, this is ticker symbol SRAC. This one also was called by Emily uh, right at $12 and $12.50. So it's trading in the same exact pattern as the rest of these as VACQ. So this one is bouncing at this $12.50 range. It's going up towards $17 and $17.50, getting rejected, coming back down to its lows, bouncing off support testing resistance, 
going back down testing support. I mean, if you look at this chart pattern, it really does not get easier for a swing trade, guys. Literally just buy at support, swing into resistance, take your profit, hold some free shares uh, based off your, how much profit you get and you know see if we can break out. Uh, I can imagine this one's gonna be in the ARK X ETF as well. I'm not really gonna get too much into momentous space because we do have previous videos on this and we do have a lot of stuff in the Discord about it already. Uh, great company though, guys. Just wanted to show you that chart pattern and let you know that the catalyst is still intact for this. Anything around $12.50, I'm personally buying, all right? And I'm buying a bunch of it. So beyond some SPACs, all right, we're gonna get away from those for a minute. I'm just gonna show you guys some other discounts uh, that are out there right now. Uh, if you look at Snapchat, and you can see what this thing did today, I do think that there's a lot of upside uh, for this company. This thing ran all the way up to 73.59 off of its last earnings. This thing's been running hard, right? And you can see every single time this thing gets into oversold range, it bounces back heavy. This thing steamrolled from 47.60 all the way to 73 dollars, right? You can see it came all the way down, extremely oversold again, looking exactly as it did over here. In addition to that, guys, as Emily pointed out to all of you earlier, it almost to the penny uh, bounced off the exact same level uh, from its past, right? So this is a really strong area for Snapchat for support. Uh, Long-term price target for this, me and Emily both believe this is going back over 60 easily, if not 73.59 or a new all-time high eventually. There's a lot of upside for this company. It's very new uh, for a lot of investors. And I, we think that this thing is gonna continue to be uh, a monster in the future. With that being said, uh, you guys, you must um, be cautious, all right? Now, just because that this level has held up in its past, it doesn't necessarily mean that it, that it always will, all right? If bond yields keep rising and fear keeps coming in the market and tech keeps selling off, yeah, of course some of these support levels can be lost. It doesn't make them bad investments either, uh, but do have stop losses in place, guys. You can always buy back in lower, uh, but without risk, you can't have great reward, man. You have to buy deep red. You have to buy at support levels. And had you done that today, you know this one already bounced as well today you see this hit 48.32 uh, already went up towards 52 dollars you look at the options chain on this thing and that's from being down early on the day uh, you know and they still move 20 30 40 percent easily uh, from its lows maybe a hundred percent from its bottom today on the options chain the options on this company move quickly uh, we love to trade options on snapchat so just keep this one in mind guys really strong support level for snapchat right there all right and the last one on the list is a fan favorite as well uh just for tonight anyway it's going to be amd so you look at this long-term trend line on amd same thing guys this thing is all the way back at support right now you see it bounced off this level here trended up bounced off this level here went all the way up towards all-time high came down slightly and then went to new all-time high right there at 99.23. It has since trailed off, bounced directly at the same exact support level, uh, and you know, hit almost hit 90 again. Uh, tech sold off again, we're right back at the support level, guys. So what's it gonna do from here? Probability says it's gonna recover from this area. As you guys know, there is a global chip shortage uh, in regards to this. If you look at the street value on AMD's processors right now, um, they're sold out everywhere. Uh, I can imagine the earnings for this company is gonna be astronomical. Uh, they're not even factoring a lot of this in yet. So if I can catch a great company like this, and I do believe that AMD can be a $200 stock long-term uh, at support, while people are panicking, man, I think this is a really good entry for this company. So I'm gonna be watching for the lows on this. Uh, if you really wanna get down and see where it bounces at, you can see uh, 73.82 was this last level. And just today, this thing hit 74.97. So 
Will this go all the way back to this low? I don't think so, guys. I think that you're going to have to buy it uh, right down in this range near $74 on, on a morning dip. And I do fully believe that this one will push back over uh, towards $90 eventually. Just like Apple and a lot of these other companies that are down heavy doesn't make them bad companies, guys. This is just a phase that a lot of stocks do go through. So we're going to have another list tonight. Uh, me and Emily are diligently working on our FDA Catalyst calendar uh, for the next month. As you guys know, we updated the Google Sheets to turn different colors based upon support and resistance levels, as well as 52 week high and lows. Uh, that way you can see all the resistance levels simultaneously on those stocks. And uh, we do have a catalyst for every single one of those things, guys. We're just waiting for solid support levels uh, to swing into those catalysts. So, we will have those things done for you guys this week. Uh, thank Emily for helping me prepare some things tonight. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I know we're new to it, but uh, I promise you the content will get better. And uh, we're just getting comfortable with it. It's very, very, very new to us. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. And we'll, we appreciate all you guys, all right?